Okay, continuing my interview with the mayor. Listen, you're a man of your word. That's why me and you get along so good. We speak our mind. Um, did you visit the shelter 2010? No. You still never been there. How come? Well, I was organized. I was setting that up to go down and meet with uh, with you. Uh, remember, uh, Mr. Duplessis. And then shortly afterwards, I got word that Mr. Duplessis had left. Yeah. Talked to him two or three times since. You uh, see a problem with the less fortunate? I always have. Sure. <laughs> you know, that that didn't that didn't come out right. <laughs> is it, are they a problem or is is it is it a problem? Well, you know, it's it's a societal problem and one that uh, we don't uh, we don't treat lightly. I mean, we certainly acknowledge it. Uh, absolutely. What do you think of having like a wet shelter? I mean, a place for these hardcore alcoholics to have a place to stay. I don't know, uh, Charles. I mean, that's something that really has to be determined by by uh, so the called experts. Well, experts in the field. I mean, psychologists, uh, psychiatrists. I've always said, and uh, and I stand by this: that uh, that uh, those people that uh, that uh, have a mental problem, uh, that at one time in this province were treated, and are now not account for a lot of the problems that that we all experience in our communities because people that do have uh, are mentally ill are left for the most part to fend to themselves that is uh, that is uh, unacceptable in my estimation and uh, somewhat inhumane in my estimation and I have said that consistently for years what is the answer I haven't come up with an answer and I don't know what the answer is but I know when they closed the hospitals and, and put people on the streets, that's not the answer. They, uh, the court system too, that's, that, that is a problem. Just for an example, the city bylaws. What's the cost? $170 if you don't wear a helmet? You know, and you had the park patrol, which I've been on their butts there last, last summer. A lot of people can't afford a helmet. And then they, therefore they can't afford the fine. You know, it's. Uh, I think the fines are too high. Well, you know, uh, there's a lot of people that use helmets and a lot of people that don't use helmets. And sometimes, every once in a while, somebody will get fined. There's a lot of common sense that is used by our police <clears throat> force. I mean, every time there's an infraction doesn't necessarily mean it's a fine. Sometimes it's a warning. Yeah. You know, it costs a lot less for a helmet than it does for a head injury at a hospital that puts you in the cat stand. But I rode a bicycle center. across Canada and across the states. I had no, no, no helmet. I would not want people to, to act like Charles LeBlanc. I don't think that's what I to me. I don't think you set a good example, Charles. <laughs> and you know, you're fine until until you have you know the spill on the bike and hit your head on a curb. Uh, in Texas, and I'm, I'm not so sure that didn't happen when you traveled across Yes, it did. Canada. Yes, it no across the states. In Texas, there's a little Texas tap there. That I just went around the corner in Van Horn, Texas, and oof, I took a big, big, big heist. But no, I mean, safety, I can understand, but that's a, that's a provincial issue anyway, because some province across Canada, they do wear a helmet. Some they don't. Many told me you don't have to wear a helmet. And some you got to be 18 years and less. 18 okay. years and I drove a motorcycle. I drove a motorcycle. Have you? Well, yeah, I, I had three motorcycles. Yeah. And I always wore a helmet. I've been in places in the United <coughs> States where you didn't have to wear a helmet. I've also, uh, you know, listened to both sides of the argument on on helmets and how a, how a helmet could be dangerous in the event of a, an accident because where it is on the neck that it breaks yeah. the neck. But nevertheless, when I'm in a place where I didn't have to, I still wore it because I felt safer with it. I did not want to bang my head on the pavement if I had to lay the bike down or if I got struck. So I think safety is a personal issue, but uh, sometimes we have to be told that seatbelt's another. I mean, I was very offended that the province in New Brunswick was gonna tell me I had to wear a seatbelt. So to get even with them, I started wearing a seatbelt a few months before the law came into effect. Mm. So uh, that way I felt I wasn't being told but I feel comfortable wearing it, and I also appreciate the fact that if you're not wearing a seatbelt, most of the accidents and most of the fatalities that we hear about are people not wearing them. So it's a good idea. So a lot of times government does the right thing, and they do it for the right reasons. Last point, uh, you plan to visit the shelter this year for the first time? I'll go with you. Oh, you'll go with me? I'll okay. go with you, as long as you don't 
talk all that much. Oh, I can keep my, my, my mouth shut when I can. Okay. That would, that would take, uh, what's that tape called? Relin. 